Welcome back to another Dirty Bastard Vlog episode of season number one and today is something very special because um, I'm already on the road. Look at this. Instead of showing you how I mount all the parts and we've seen this in the last episode, this is really a bit boring. I decided to do a walk around. Let's start, let's hop over to the bike. There are a few different kits on the market. I decided to go for kit690.com and I never ever ever regretted this. Kit by 690 comes with another rear tank. The 7.1 of course has the rear tank, but uh, this is changed to a rear tank. I guess it's from the 450 KTM rally bike. So we've got the rear tank here. Um, it's obviously mounted to the original mounting point down here. Um, this one has to be a little bit modified, but uh, nothing super tricky, easily done. There has to be a little bit of modification on the frame here, but also this is ver done very quickly and uh, not a big deal. So the electronic compartment um, is more or less the same than in the 701. Really it's a plug and play thing. You take all your parts out of the 701, put them in here, that's it. No new mounts to be attached or nothing. It's, it's easy. There are two frame adapters inside here. Um, they fit to the to the 701 frame. Um, they allow you to to uh, play a little bit with the angle, so you can mount everything nice and straight. Um, the thing where I ran into a problem is this Rottweiler air intake. Um, when I ordered the kit, John from Kit 690 offered me to. Uh, send me a rally airbox too. I decided to go for the Rottweiler one and for me as a vlogger um, I would do it again. If you do not need this super 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 cool extra space here you will get a rock box no, a bag from Rottweiler um, where I have my power bank to charge I have my GoPro batteries always charged I even uh, once got a burger from Burger King and wanted to eat it at home and it uh, stays nice warm in there. But uh, anyways, if you don't need this, I think um, the Rally Airbox from John is the way to go. For me, this is perfect. But if you are going the Rottweiler way, there are a few things to keep in mind. The Rottweiler one is too wide here, does not fit in between the, the kit because um, I had to lower the angle. Usually, the Rottweiler air intake sits a little bit more up like this. Um, I had to lower it here to uh, get the seat on because uh, the seat was always hitting the, the plastic here on the intake. Um, to do this, I cut the, the tube which goes down to the intake in an angle so it doesn't sit like this, it sits like this. And I had to modify the mount of the air intake to yeah, mount it a lot lower. Another huge mistake I made, and this is really the biggest one in the whole bike build, always measure twice. I had everything mounted. Um, I had the tank mounted and I had a little bit of problems with uh, getting all the angles for the front tanks. And uh, after a while I was walking around the bike and realized that the rear tank was looking totally to the right. So. What I did, my bad, these mounts here need to be drilled into this, uh, this uh, part of the frame, which is not a big deal. But uh, if you drill this one, like uh, half a centimeter too much in the front, of course, the rear tank will not be straight. It will be like this. I'm a beginner, I know, but it was an easy fix, a new hole, and everything was uh, fine, and I was on track again. Next is the seat, and the seat was, uh, wow, I was surprised by this. Um, the seat itself is super, super nice and comfortable, and uh, the quality and the style is exceptional. Um, <laughs> I met a lot of people while traveling now, and even a few people with rally kits from uh, other companies, and everybody, the first thing they saw and the first thing they were asking, but wow, I want the seat. Where did you get the seat? I want the seat for my kid. My seat is horrible. This one is awesome. 
Okay, so it's a little bit wider here, which give it which gives it a very very cool style. And the seat itself is super oops, super comfortable. Um, not like other kits. It fits the style of the bike perfectly. I love it. John, if you check this, thanks for building this seat. And it's even carbon. It's awesome. It's a piece of beauty and one of my favorite pieces of the whole kit. <laughs> From the seat to the front tanks. Um, the front tanks are KTM tanks and uh, there's not so much to say about them. Uh, mounting is super straightforward. Um, it comes with the mounting adapters. No need to drill holes or something like this. It comes with a plate here with the mounting points on top for the right and the left one is the mounting point for the pin for a steering dampener too. As I mentioned before, the rear tank comes with the frame adapters. Those go here and uh, there's the mounting point here. And for this mounting point, there's an adapter too. No need to drill holes here. You use the uh, original mounting point, but you had to uh, make it wider and uh, drill a new, uh, yeah. No idea, I'm German, I mentioned this earlier. Anyways, there's a little, little bit of modification to do here, but it's not directly on the frame and it's easily done in two minutes, even for me as a total amateur and beginner. One thing I can tell you about the tank is uh, it's uh, pretty robust. I crashed it on the lava rocks really hard and uh, yeah very very sharp lava rocks and uh, nothing just the uh, stickers got off but but it has to look like this it's, it's a rally bike okay while we are down on the bike let's go to the bash plate the bash plate is full carbon it's super super nice and i can tell you 100 percent for sure this is super super durable and sturdy because with all this lava rocks where um, I've been riding for the last days, weeks, um, well, it gets a lot of scratches, but uh, it kept up so super nice. I had so many rocks hitting here and I always hear them and I feel like, wow, this must have broken the whole bike. It sounds like, but well, nothing. Just from a crash, there are a few scratches, but it's super, it's awesome, I love it. The fairing is original KTM, um, which is super nice for us Germans because it comes with the KTM numbers and everything. Um, German TOV told me, uh, not a big deal, mount it, we need to get this into the papers, it's fine. Um, I think I believe them. And what I really love about the fairing is that you get it off with just four quick connectors. There's uh, a quick connector here, of course on the other side one here and uh, that's it already it uh, snaps in down here but uh, you can take the whole fairing off with um, in one minute maximum so if you have some uh, roadside repairs to do it's it's off very very fast from the fairing to the exhaust I love the look of the silencer I love the sound of the silencer but let's uh, be honest the silencer is super super loud um, sometimes I wished it would be a little bit less noisy, especially when you're riding around in the dark, when you're riding around in areas where you're not 100% sure if it's legal, um, like we did here. But in the end it was all legal, it was fine and nobody complained about this ever. But uh, yeah, imagine coming home in the night and you don't want to wake up your neighbors. It's a little bit tricky with this one. But uh, when it's a rally bike, forget what I said, it has to be loud. <laughs> Navigation tower. Um, the navigation tower is uh, it is a piece of beauty. Uh, mounting was straightforward. Well, more or less straightforward. It's very, 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 very tight sometimes, but uh, it's supposed to be like this. And uh, once I figured it out, it worked like a charm. Um, what you you have a decision on the navigation tower when you mount the stuff, the original bike parts. Um, this piece here, I forgot the name at the moment um, you can mount it here on the side so it's a perfect fit or you can mount it on the downside here where it might get a little bit more fresh air 
Um, if you mount it on the downside, you need longer cables. Um, I've mounted it to the left and uh, I am running the bike, or I have been running the bike in uh, 30 degree conditions and up and it's absolutely no problem. Everything works like a charm. On top of the rally tower, I mounted all the original parts. Of course, the trail check, you've seen this in another episode. Uh, I've added the tire pressure monitoring system and uh, ah, there's one more button I had to drill a hole here to mount my uh, heated grips. For the lighting, um, there are two different options. You get the, the standard beam and the high beam. The high beam is uh, Baja Squadron. Um, you can go for the Pro, which uh, what I highly recommend. Um, I have the standard one in mine. Um, works as a high beam, works perfectly on the street. Um, I ran off-road with the bike in the night and I really wished for more light. So uh, if you go this way, uh, order the Pro one. I guess it's worth it. So last thing about the kit is the graphics of course. Um, John offers a few nice nice graphic kits uh, for this bike. Of course you can go for custom ones like I did. Um, everybody was incredibly helpful with the custom decals. Um, they sent me the Photoshop data to work and play around a little bit with this and I gave them the data in full size and they did the rest from scratch. Um, so this worked out too and I really love how the look turned out and the quality is awesome. Okay guys, uh, let me tell you a few words about the build and especially about uh, John and Kit 690. Um, first things first, this is not sponsored and nothing. I bought everything on the kit, uh, I got nothing for free and um, I was checking the internet for the parts I wanted and I'm very honest with, uh, with you guys. Um, then I ran into problems with the build, um, a few, but uh, this was my own fault, like with the rear tank, like I told you. But company-wise, really everybody was, was awesome. When I had questions, everybody answered quickly. There's uh, one thing I really want to mention, and uh, I say this again, this is uh, not sponsored and nothing. If you want a rally kit, consider going to kit690.com. We just finished season one. Season two is coming of this vlog and uh, you will see that I put this rally kit to a very, very, very hard test with crashes and everything. The build quality is awesome. Everything held up perfectly and uh, there's, there's nothing, nothing I can complain about. When I ran into my first problems with the build of the kit, which was with the tower, I, uh, wrote John an email, John from Kids 90 and uh, said, hey, I read somewhere that there's a Facebook group of Kids 90 owners, maybe you can add me and I can check out uh, what others did or if only if I have the problem. And what he did was within minutes, he sent me his private phone number, told me, hey, here's my WhatsApp, ask me whatever you want, whenever you want. Oops, sorry. And he did. I had a lot of stupid questions um, whenever I texted him. He was, yeah, don't worry. I will go down to my garage. I will take pictures of you of how to do it. And uh, this is awesome. This is the best support I ever had. Once again, not sponsored. John does not know that I'm telling all this stuff. John, if you... We are finished with season number one. And the next season, I can promise you, it's awesome because I already captured 90% of the second season. The second season is, uh, is about a trip. It's about a trip with this bike, with my best mate, with a few other very, very, very cool guys from the Canary Islands. And we were doing, uh, or we will do for you, all seven Canary Islands off-road in a very short amount of time. We have only two weeks to do this. Trust me, it's unbelievable. You don't want to miss the next episodes. Trust me, this is the end of season number one. Thanks for watching. Dirty Bastard. See you in the next one. <laughs> I'm out now. Bye.